uh, R&D results on uh, my R&D arbitrary decision making in C++ system. Um, so first I want to share uh, criteria to the system. Uh, it uh, must have uh, a framework to improve R&D efficiency and efficacy. Uh, it must have some criteria to the input also. I decided it must be demoable and interactive, so it should provide some command line interface, um, some arbitrary solver underneath. Uh, so you input some expressions uh, in mathematical terms, and uh, it accepts it, shows some vision of input uh, successful. And uh, then it uh, gonna help you to solve the system and uh, allow to see uh, unknown variables, calculate its values. Um, arbitrary precision uh, arithmetics uh, by design, I decided to use uh, polymorphic typization in C++, one of uh, the first, if not the first, the first maybe, uh, uh, presentation of this series on YouTube uh, is about polymorphic typization in C++. So this R&D basically stands on this vision and uh, this technology. Uh, feel free to see this YouTube channel and note uh, this polymorphic typization presentation. Another criteria, it, uh, of course, it uh, should be cross-platform. So R&D framework should provide cross-platform features. Um, also, I decided to make framework uh, reusable in the way that it allowed to um, you know, optimize time spent for R&Ds in future. Uh, these are some optimization for R&D time. Um, basically, this framework uh, allows to add new component in single step. I'll show you in next slide. Um, it uh, allows to pick up changes automatically and um, build it into components. Also, it is uh, cross-platform. Uh, it supports some CI features. I used uh, GitHub action files and uh, Docker containers. Uh, it provides some basic measurement uh, features. Uh, provides uh, uh, basic uh, hardware acceleration support for computations um, to use GPU and HPC through OpenCL. Uh, rebasable computing is a concept uh, when system allowed to uh, implement new hardware accelerators in future and its architecture compatible with flexible a choice on uh, new computing ac accelerators. For example, the system uh, probably supports well replacing its computation acceleration on quantum acceleration frameworks. Um, uh, next uh, thing, it, uh, uh, in, in order to optimize R&D time, it should uh, provide abstract, some abstractions uh, for tasks handling, uh, for input handling, for solvings and uh, mathematical expressions. So abs what abstract mathematical expressions are? Uh, I guess uh, everyone uh, understands uh, what it is. Um, it's a polymorphic structure which allows to build uh, mathematical expressions 
with variables, uh, with equations, systems, uh, and other mathematical abstractions. So it provides an object, serialization, um, conversion, solvers, support, etc. Um, it uses uh, also uh, serialization to OpenCL, which uh, allow pretty simple uh, use of uh, high performance computing. Also, this uh, feature may be used to generate code for C++ or other languages. So, um, prerequisites. Framework should support, um, depend on other components, right? On third parties. Uh, this is what uh, the slide about, prerequisites. Uh, here's a sample CI action file, which uses uh, this framework. You can see uh, it runs on Ubuntu container. Uh, and uh, inside this Ubuntu container, it builds a um, Docker container. The framework has a Docker container file, which describes how to build the Docker container, and it pushes it to Docker Hub. So this is a recommended way to handle prerequisites because it's fast enough. Uh, Docker-based build uh, provides all prerequisites in four minutes. Then Windows, for example, to build all prerequisites may take 40 minutes to build Boost and other components. Anyway. The framework supports also to make um, fetch content to fetch uh, prerequisites uh, source codes directly from GitHub or GitLab or any Git repository you provide. Use CMake to configure it uh, and build. It supports some famous uh, third parties. So on this slide, we can see. Uh, CMake uh, first creates build directory, and then uh, CMake configures a uh, project. And first thing, it's not for build, but building prerequisites. So next step is uh, installing prerequisites. It creates, uh, includes, and binary directories inside uh, CMake binary. So we need to reconfigure again, in order to detect uh, installed third parties. So next step is configure again, components detected, uh, third parties detected. Uh, and then we can build, then build successful. Um, last uh, step is uh, launching the test to make test, test. Here's how this framework should handle prerequisites for ND. <clears throat> Next slide, utility targets. In order to optimize R&D time, I also decided to provide additional utility targets. So here's a picture. You can see how um, single component description looks like. Please note how short it is because you never see a uh, CMake uh, file, this one, I mean this short, uh, in order to provide a component library. The last uh, line 27 uh, says it's lib. A library which depends on another component and uh, libgpack turbo for example here on the slide you can see line 10 is uh, github short link so first uh, part of 10 uh, line of line 10 
is libjpeg turbo its name of of uh, account on the github and second part is uh, name of repository and line 11 is uh, cmake supported uh, cmake target uh, it basically what libjpeg turbo provides for us to depend on you can see uh, line 13 madler the lib and line uh, 15 for lib png please note that uh, it's case sensitive because find package is case sensitive so account name uh, case sensitive uh, uh, doesn't matter and the uh, repository name must be case sensitive the similar uh, macros like lib on line 27 are macros exe and macros test basically provides components for executable and for test uh, the convention is you create test directory subdirectory under your component subdirectory the directory name basically becomes the name of the project so lib name is deducible from the directory and um, uh, if it has test directories and tests also enabled um, but not if you concentrate it not for tests for example you can uh, you can have utility target for enabling tests which framework provides so once you run enable test target you have this uh, tests enabled and split by categories so here's the utilities also prerequisites is a utility target update updates uh, your repository and framework uh, using rebasing and um, basically it uh, assumes that git is used as a version control system and uh, use uh, pull rebase auto stash, which uh, most commonly used by it to uh, develop. So, uh, as for me, it's the shortest, the most laconic possible way to handle these things. So, this is component handling optimized for RD development. <clears throat> next slide library utility functionality um inside it has some components providing in order to optimize certain time uh like some functions to measure uh time um in basically it uh, allows us to consider a very good feature for R&D is not just measure time of uh, running some part, you know, but uh, choose, right, uh, in the code uh, to choose the fastest uh, method just run those in parallel and uh, once it measured, use this measurement to decide uh, which method to use in future. um so it's uh, basically part of uh, development process to decide all these things uh i think that it can be implemented inside framework in library and automate uh, made automatically so another utility functionality is support of high performance computing uh, it provides generator for opencl because opencl is a uh, standard the fact that it's the only standard uh you know it's standardized you know so basically by implementing opencl we implementing the most of hpc hardware support uh intel cpu has opencl support intel accelerators has opencl support nvidia gpus has opencl support all gpus has uh 
almost all has open cell support. And uh, for those who haven't, we have um, some emulators from .cl based on CPU functions. Uh, uh, in future, a direct CUDA uh, generators may be easily implemented, really easily implemented. Uh, but why? If we have open cell support, right? There is actually a good reason for this because CUDA has uh, arbitrary precision support. Not the CUDA itself, but uh, NVIDIA framework does. So basically, we could uh, have better HPC for arbitrary precision arithmetics. Uh, some generators for FPGA may be easily implemented. So this uh, framework may be extended with FG FPGA support. Also, it may be extended with uh, quantum acceleration. OpenQL is a framework uh, which is considered under consideration. Caching features, uh, pretty major uh, library utility functionality. Cache of calculations, pretty simple concept, but uh, it is efficient. If you have uh, arbitrary solvers, you can store intermediary results and uh, use them for future runs. Once you solve some pattern of equation, you can use this result in future. It looks like uh, your application is learning to run code faster using this technology. Um, Foundation DB uh, is the uh, next thing uh, that may extend this caching through multiple nodes in through internet by putting calculation cache into the cloud. Currently, level DB support implemented for uh, caching for storing intermediary results. Uh, and the calculation cache could even improve performance of single run because some parts of code uh, used multiple times. So basically, uh, next view on caching for features is to provide parallel, uh, parallel uh, key value storage. Uh, basically, multiple layers allow us to handle uh, local cache for best uh, best uh, time for result locally. And uh, Foundation DP gives us result a bit later than level DP. Uh, but from multiple nodes, it potentially can give us results that the local cache hasn't. And sure, we should synchronize uh, caches between each other. Uh, anyway, all this utility functionality is optional. You can turn off uh, cache completely in order if you want to build your framework for Arduino, for example. <clears throat> Next slide. Uh, component line interface. So I decided to optimize command line interface also because um, we need to reduce the RD time, right? And uh, I decided to optimize its simplicity because it's uh, not a commonly known language. So we better make rules as simple as possible. So basically mathematical abstractions is the decided way, the chosen way. Um, you basically input mathematical expression 
and uh, expect it adds to it to the system and then you request a variable to the top. That's the simplest possible. Um, next slide. A uh, little more notes on uh, features. Basically, uh, this way uh, through mathematical expressions allow us uh, the old dream of software development. Uh, it's stateless. It's stateless development. If you only fill system of equations, uh, then this equation provides no state. A description of relations between variables. Uh, this is how SQL, Haskell, and Prolog was designed in mind. But the thing is that Transact SQL supports variables, right? And uh, Haskell um, probably one of the closest to this goal, but still it, uh, it has imp imperative implementation. And Prolog even have operator for stopping iterations. So basically, uh, this implementation provides uh, states, if not variables, but states for sure. So this way allows to gain these benefits of stateless coding. Um, uh, basically, it uh, must be bug free. If, you, if your statements are correct, then bugs are impossible. This is the benefit of stateless coding. Uh, so it may be used for QA process, for example, to check, uh, to check that these statements of QA are valid. Uh, it can check relations between input and output of a program. I remember projects where I could uh, up, up, apply this very well. Also, despite it has uh, stateless, um, you gain all these feature set like distributable computations. Um, you can rebase to quantum, etc. And uh, if you provide best mathematics, then mathematicians could uh, give you a way to optimize combinatorics just to eliminate iterations. For example, uh, it may be used for cryptography. Solver. It's a component you need to solve tasks. So if you need to provide solvers, and you can extend the system visiting new solvers, new ways uh, to describe tasks like support for trigonometry, for example. It has trigonometry su support already, support for differentiation or other mathematical abstractions, differential solutions, etc. Uh, why we need? or optimization, optimization task. A differentiative coding is a new way of to do software development. You can find them in Wikipedia, but it is really new. It allows us to use uh, minimal and maximum finding using a differential, uh, differential. So, uh, this basically uh, give a way to make some um, optimized uh, result quicker than by brute forcing or iteration methods. Um, how to provide uh, this sequence of uh, executing solution? It should describe tasks, for example. 
uh, for start. Uh, it uh, like uh, describing um, some initial equations for physics. Uh, some text file, script file for this particle. Uh, <clears throat> um, oh, has physical known equations for physics. This uh, provides us some common context. For example, for physics work. And uh, then you provide additional context to the task. Let's uh, say some physicists uh, decided to uh, check new equation. It provides this equation, provides some data. Uh, like a variable equals some data, variable equals some data. Uh, and uh, the system should uh, evaluate these variables into existing equations. Uh, and then it uh, has a new set of shorter equation this uh, made substitution with evaluated variables, which also use it in uh, decision making process. About the decision, uh, <clears throat> we are getting to this. Mm, here is how we uh, making uh, some algorithm or sequence. To calculate an algorithm, we need uh, a vision of states. Uh, but instead of states, we have sequences. Uh, to encode a sequence, I decided to use um, to use binary mask and um, encode sequence inside a value. So we have big arbitrary precision value. Uh, first byte, for example, encodes uh, first step, second byte, second step, and so on. This way we can uh, get a formula of uh, the sequence and uh, to solve it and get it as an X, get uh, the result. So basically, uh, we need to formulate this task in a way uh, of relations between these steps uh, in order to get a function, for example, from time yeah, or from frame number. Let's say it, uh, for simplicity, let's say it's a codec for video and uh, we need uh, some context data between frames. Uh, well, the frame number may be um, uh, this uh, number of a byte, for example. Um, anyway, uh, next slide. About the sequence. <clears throat> um, the system. As I uh, described in previous slide, a uh, good example of this uh, physics because we already have a huge set of equations. Uh, so we just uh, run this file. It's a command line inter interface allows to load this file and uh, command line interface allows to uh, add some additional context data, additional equations and uh, variable values. Then we just put variable name, enter, and it must show us some result. So here's this uh, slide, basically additional list of context specific equations. It's uh, the step when we add in equations. 
request is a variable we enter and uh, uh, priority evaluation is the way how we find this variable value mm. now uh, when we solve in a system we first evaluate the variable to equations which uh, has no other variables right in order to give direct value uh, which has only uh, the less as possible variable this way of prioritizing uh, allow us uh, um, give result in timely fashion pretty interesting um so the select, selected result flow in details uh, first uh, our r d load execution system provides a common client interface uh, and parameter we can use parameter file to load this uh, uh, preset applications um, uh, well it should uh, provide us all the details to use the system right away because uh, it's uh, simple enough and not a common thing because nobody knows it uh, then the enter equation context so like a school task for example you know uh tasks for physics if you enter additional values uh, known values and uh, uh next step r d should provide us with confirmation output that uh, it understand us correctly why we need it because uh, r d is a um, fresh stage when uh, mistakes are possible so we should be sure that each statement is understood correctly so we could know uh, early if uh, additional solver must be added or other thing so the next step uh, is uh, requesting variable name it is as simple as it is we enter variable name enter um, and observing the result uh, it should give us a result so uh, I now can demonstrate this prototype. But first, uh, I want to ask if uh, any questions by slides. So I could uh, open previous one of previous slides and uh, answer your questions first. Please. Okay. As it, yeah, if you you have questions, please unmute. Just unmute and ask. Okay. Uh, if no questions, good. Uh, let's go to the prototype. So here is the prototype. Let's launch it again. As you can see, the requisites uh, cache it because of installation so it launches fairly quickly using all these prerequisites here is uh, the output uh, pinto uh, xcode has target output menu here by default it's all output in you cannot uh, use it by default but if you choose target output then it works uh, here is the rule set as I told it shows the rules, simple as it is. Uh, you can enter expression with variables, which automatically equals to zero in order to reduce input time. So let's enter some, re some uh, for example, per perimeter uh, is, uh, a side plus b side twice automatically equals to zero here is the uh, response that is what it understands you can see it balanced the equations and uh, store it to the system some values for example the perimeter is known is value it's 20. here's the additional equation perimeter plus minus 20. 
equals to zero. Let's say we know uh, we know one side uh, B is six. Um, what is the value of A? Here is the result. This is how the prototype looks like. It uh, also supports multiple values. For example, X may be equal 20, but X may be equal 30. What is X? 30 and 20. Or I hope you enjoyed the prototype. Uh, if you have some questions, feel free to ask, really. Uh, maybe some 